G'day everyone, today I'd like to talk about some type-in computer games made in BASIC from the Usborne series of computer programming books. Back in the day, in the early 80s, they made these books to teach kids the basics of programming computers, obviously in BASIC. Uh, they were targeted at home computers, such as the Commodore 64, the Apple, the TRS-80, and of course the Spectrum, among a few others. Now, of course, I didn't have any, one, any of these home computers. I had an IBM PC running GW Basic. So unfortunately, a lot of the basic games in these books would not work when I tried to type them in. I actually spent quite a lot of time typing in one of them from uh, the Fantasy Games book. It was quite a large game named Dungeon. And it really looked so cool in the book and I really wanted it to work. But obviously, not being for the correct platform, it didn't. One of these days I will actually um, perhaps try porting it to GW Basic to see if I can get it to work. But today I want to look at two games, uh, one of them from the Creepy Computer Games book. The first one is called Ghost Guzzler. So let's just load it up. Um, I've actually got two versions of this game, um, one based on the original code from the book, and a remake that I've made some years later. So let's just take a look at the original. For some reason they never used a timer or anything to remove this prompt from the game, so you always had to enter a random number. Oh, okay. It drops you straight in. And I'm going to lose straight. Oh, got one. So yeah, I, I'm definitely going to need to have another go. Um, oh jeez. <laughs> um. Okay, I'm getting there, but I have to concentrate really hard. Oh no, I'll never get that. Oh, missed. Anyhow, you can see uh, it's actually a pretty simple game. You've got that number that travels across the screen and the one at the end in the, roughly the middle of the screen. The aim of the game is to get the traveling number and the one at the, at the right to match um, by pressing a key to change it and X to mark it when they match. Um, and that resets everything. Now, um, obviously, there's a few problems with this game because the, the first one, obviously, is there's no instructions and it goes a little bit too fast. So, um, some years later, and for my blog, I actually wrote a uh, remake of it. So, we'll load that up because that's actually a much better version of this game, even though it's almost exactly the same in terms of gameplay. Uh, let's load that up. Okay, um, back in the day when I actually did the remake, I didn't know which book this came from. It turns out that it came from the book Creepy Computer Games. That's where I found it fairly recently. So let's uh, have a go at playing. I'm going to set the difficulty to three, I think. And we should be uh, able to play it from there. You can see already that it's nowhere near as fast as the original code. And you actually start out with some points. That's because I'm starting at a higher level than the first one. Um, another thing that's different is that you can actually change the number down as well as up. So if you overshoot, you can get your way back to the number. Um, and it does wrap around in both directions. So if you go around the top, it goes that way. If you go around the bottom, it also goes around. Um, yeah, again, same concept. Fairly simple. Gradually speeds up as time progresses, as you get more score. Um, it's sort of very difficult to notice the speeding up, but it is happening. You can perhaps Perhaps you can see how it's going a little bit faster now. Yeah, 
any minute now, it's going to go way too fast for me. I won't be able to keep up. Oh, uh, yeah, I think it's gotten that point. Oh, I missed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it seems I reached the end where I couldn't go any further. Anyhow, you, um, you get the general gist of that game. It's, it's very simple. There wasn't a lot I could actually add to it. Okay, now we're going to take another look at a type-in game named Downhill Skiing. This one, uh, I couldn't actually locate the book that it came from. I know that the book was for the BBC Micro, but I couldn't find it in any of the Usborne books that I looked at online. Let's load it up and have a look at how it plays. Okay, so this is a simple game where you are skiing down a slope and need to keep on the ski slop so you don't fall off the mountain. So clearly I have a bit of a typo there. It should say ski slope. Um, it's quite similar to... <laughs> early race uh, car racing games. Okay, so uh, clearly I didn't proofread this before I put it on the internet. Um, but let's uh, set it to the maximum speed and see what the game looks like. Okay, so it's pretty simple. You're the two exclamation marks that sort of look like skis. And the two hash marks there. They, they basically represent the two edges of the ski slope. And if you run into them, obviously, that's the end of your happy fun time going down the mountain. Um, so some things I could have added to this game. I, I think I probably could have added some obstacles, such as trees or maybe animals or things. And it's, you know, think things you might find in Ski Free. And I think I probably could have put the uh, player character in the middle of the screen instead of at the bottom because at the bottom you don't really get any warning or time to avoid things that are coming right up so if you're going to have obstacles or other things in view you really need would need to have the character player in the like the player in the middle of the screen and that was kind of the point of these type in games was for young coders to type them in learn how they work and modify them and you know, that would give them plenty of room to modify this particular game into something a bit better. So yeah, um, I've just hit the wall and that's the end of my go. If you're interested in taking a look at some of the type-in programs from the Usborne books yourself, they have actually released all of these books for free on their website. I will link that down below so that you can go and find it and have a look at the books. Uh, they're quite interesting and some of them might, might actually have a go at porting to GW Basic at some point. So I think we'll leave it there. I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.